So before I begin this video, I just want to quote Bob Ross real quick and say, we don't make mistakes, we have happy accidents. I want to go through what I did to get Debian 11 Bullseye with the latest real-time kernel and a completely scratch-built Linux CNC install working on this Kufun mini PC. I picked it up for $169. Uh, it might be a little bit more right now, but that's what I paid for it. And every time I look from at least one vendor or another, there are offerings of the 169 there or about. Um, I'm currently in a dark room because the glare is terrible on the screen. This will be the de facto for how I got to where I'm at now. I installed the original official ISO with the 2.8.2 .2 software on it. And then I started doing a video where I was installing the real-time kernel. And I said, you know what, let's start from complete beginning and not have any kind of tweaks or what have you from the official ISO download. And let's just do a complete from scratch install. So that's what I did. On the computer itself, I'm actually dual booting Windows. I'll show you that right now because this thing actually runs pretty quick and it loads up fairly fast. And the reason why I'm dual booting Windows is because Windows came installed on this thing and I kept it before I wiped it out to make sure that Linux CNC would work and that my latency numbers would be okay. And my latency numbers are very okay. <laughs> um, they're not perfect. I'm trying to get it down a little bit. I noticed that I'm using the Cinnamon environment for Debian, but I found that XFCE runs a little bit better for the servo thread latency, but it's about 10,000 difference which, all things considered, isn't really going to make or break the install. And of course, Windows decided it wants to update during my video. So, I'm going to pause this until it comes back and we will resume. And we're back. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will load up Windows, only to show you what I did step by step. So, again, the reason why I keep Windows on... Or the reason why I kept Windows on this micro PC was first to prove out that it would work. And if it didn't work, I could always just take Linux out and then send it back to Amazon. But also because a lot of the software for tuning the servo motors runs on Windows architectures. So it's good to have a Windows install in order to get that to work. That way you can tune the servos without having to have a separate PC. So the first thing I did was I went to Debian 11 ISO non-free in Google search. And I went to the live install images. And then when you scroll down, there's an unofficial live images for stable with firmware included. I click on that. And then under AMD 64, ISO hybrid, you can download Debian 11 live image with different interfaces. You can get Cinnamon, you can get GNOME, you can get standard XFCE. The reason why I go to the non-free is because it will give you the non-free firmware for any kind of weird hardware that you might have on your mini PC or on your computer. So I downloaded that, the ISO image, whichever one you choose. And then from there, rufus.ie. And just like I have in my bare bones videos, if you download the Rufus utility, which I already have, inside of here, you plug in your USB stick, you select the downloaded ISO image, I go to Advanced Drive Properties and Add Fix for Old BIOS. But aside from that, everything else is the same. 
hit start, and it'll burn the ISO image. From there, if I reboot this, when you're booting up these micro PCs or a lot of computers these days, instead of F2 or F10, you hold in the delete key and that'll bring you to the BIOS configuration. And I did something in the BIOS configuration that I'm not sure if it had any kind of bearing on the install or not, but it this computer took the ISO install, even the, the Linux CNC ISO image, it took it pretty much perfectly without having to do any kind of weird adjustments to it. Sometimes you got to turn on legacy BIOS and stuff like that, but I didn't do any of that here. It just took the install no problem. So what I did was under the secure boot key management enroll EFI image, there was a, when you have the the USB plugged in, there was an option for the USB. I chose the USB and then it gave me the option for a grub install EFI, which again, I don't know if that made any kind of difference, but it just went right in. So I'm not going to say that it didn't do anything, but I'm not going to say that it did. Under the boot property here, if you make the USB device your primary boot option. In this case, I'm going to go back to hard disk, but if you make it your primary boot option, it'll boot off of the USB. If it doesn't boot off the USB, even though you have it set as the first boot option, just go down to hard disk and set it to disabled. And what that'll do is it'll default it to grab the USB device. And that's pretty much it. It'll, <laughs> there's no other thing that it can boot off of. After you do the installation, make sure that you set your boot options to Debian first. And what that will do is it will use the grub install or the grub loader instead of the Windows boot. Because if you have Windows boot, it's going to go right to Windows. It's not going to give you the option for Linux. So I'm just going to discard that exit without saving. Let me see, it goes right to grub. So if you go through the installation, just like you would with the official ISO. You put the USB stick in and you boot off of the USB stick. You follow the prompts for the installation and it just goes in without a hitch. So now once you get into the Debian environment, and again, I, I did the Cinnamon install, but I do have XFCE on here as well, but I did uh, Cinnamon as my primary. From there, I went into Terminal. I installed Chromium but you can do this off of Firefox browser as well. If you go into Firefox and you do a search for Qt Pi VCP Bullseye, the first link is Debian 11 Bullseye install with Python 3. So if you go to this page and you just follow these instructions, it'll pretty much get you where you need to be this part here, this Grub Customizer, for some reason it didn't let me do it the way that it shows here on this install, but on my laptop it did, it did work. So if you just go into Terminal and you just do a sudo app get install Grub Customizer, it'll install the Grub Customizer, and that just lets you choose which kernel that you're running and, and it lets you set your uh, ISO CPUs much easier than having to do it through um, text file manipulation. And I'll just show you what the Grub Customizer looks like if I can find it. Uh, Grub, here. So this is pretty much what it looks like. I'm using the 5.10 0-16 RT kernel. The one that comes with the live install was uh, dash 13, not real time. So to get the real time kernel, go to the Synaptic package manager. Once you get into there, do a search for Linux, scroll down to the L's and eventually look for the Linux image 
5.10.0-16-RT-AMD64. Signed. Click on that. Mark for installation. Once you click Mark for installation, hit apply, and just wait, and it'll install the kernel. Once you have that done, reboot. Go to the advanced options and select the real-time kernel. Reload the interface. We'll go back to Firefox. And then from there, we can skip the Grub Customizer because we did that already. If we go to Terminal and type in uname-a, you can see that we're running the real-time kernel here. From there, we just take this entire line of information. This will install all of the dependencies that we need. We can do a control C, copy it, and then in terminal, if you hold control and shift, you can hit V and it'll paste it. From there, just hit enter and it will install all of these dependencies for you. While that's installing, you can go to this link here and you can download all of the Debian packages already pre-compiled for you. So in my case, I grabbed the English documentation, I grabbed the three use space images. After you get the Debian packages, you'll notice right here, there's a new requirement for this PO4A. Admittedly, I don't know how to install this from source. I could do this, I could follow this stuff to build from source, and I have, but I don't know if the steps are the same here. So what I did was I went to terminal, sudo app get install po4a, and that installed not the 0.66 version, I think it installed the 0.62 version, but it seemed to take it, no problem. From there, if we go to here, the GW package installer is already put in because of the dependencies that got installed or because it was part of the non-free installation. I'm not sure which, but it was there. So I go into there, and then from there, I just go to File, Open, find the packages, and just start installing them. So in my case, I had them in downloads originally, but I was kind of bouncing back and forth between just doing it directly from downloads and creating my own folder. So I created a folder called dev Linux CNC and I put them there. I was going to do a run in place, but I haven't gotten to that yet. So I just grab all the, each of the packages, install them one by one, re uh, reboot the computer and it will put it in its own category and you get all of your Linux CNC stuff here. And that was pretty much all I had to do. And then to get my 7i96s configured, down in the corner, we go to the network configuration. Under network connections, the wired connections. On the drop down menus, they had EMP2SO and EMP3SO. But they didn't have. The original default devices didn't have MAC addresses next to them. So I picked the ones that had the MAC addresses because initially I was having a very unstable connection and I just chose the, the two and the three with the MAC addresses. And then under IPv4 settings, I set the method to manual. One of the addresses I set to 10.10.10.2. .10 .10 the other one I set to 10.10.10.3. .10 .10 .10 no gateway, netmask of 24, which is default to 255.255.255.0. If we look here, in case I plug into the other port, I've got the other address. My other videos point to doing the if up down to true. And to show you that, if I go to here and I go into my file system, etc. Network Manager, networkmanager.conf. 
you'll see that the if up down is set to false but even still I'm able to connect with both wired and wireless connections at the same time maybe by making it true it'll be better but for this installation I didn't have to change that I went through the PNC conf wizard and I did the INI masking of the card name made that an S and the other thing that you want to be aware of is that you'll have to download the HMOT drivers yourself. But again, pretty easy. If I go into Firefox, go to mesanet.com. Under mesanet.com, anything IO FPGA, the first link is the HostMOT2 firmware. Download that zip file. Once you download the zip file, it'll be in your downloads folder. Double click on it, go to extract, go into home and create a folder called HM2. Once you do that, extract the files into that folder, go to terminal, um, you might want to, well, you'll have to install the way that I did it. I installed uh, Thunner, T-H-U-N-A-R. So do a sudo app get install Thunner. And that'll install the Thunner, 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 Thunner um, file browser. And from there, you could do sudo Thunner. And what this will allow you to do is it'll allow you to browse as root. So what you can do is take that HM2 folder, copy it, go into file system, and then under lib, uh, firmware, just paste that folder into slash lib slash firmware. You'll see right here I've got the HMOT or HM2 folder with all of the drivers in it. And from there, PNC Conf will work. It will be able to pull the right drivers and everything just works at that point. So, uh, I mean, I hope this is helpful. I, I spent a uh, better part of the day or better part of my afternoon getting this to where it was just a step-by-step -step thing. Again, burn the ISO image, install the ISO image, put in the dependencies, put in Thunder, put in Chromium, put in a couple of you know, a couple little extra things that didn't come with it. Put in that PO4A, the Grub configure tool, and then just follow this video. I mean. It can't get that much easier. I've gotten it to the point where right now I'm, I'm isolating CPU number three on this computer. I don't know if it's making that big of a difference, but if I go into my latency histogram dash dash no base, I'm able to load up 20 GLX gears. And you can see it did jump on me here. I don't know why it jumped. Because it wasn't giving me this point or this 83 before. It was giving me 50. But load up 20 GLX gears. And from there, just grab it. And you can pull on it and move it around. I don't think it's going to spike any higher than that. It was probably in the middle of doing something when I started doing this. But I did. this is the most spike that I've seen. And like I said, I, I did notice that XFCE is a little bit better for servo latency but it's still not horrible when i set up my pnc conf i made my configuration instead of it being what is that one one two three four instead of making it a million i made it 1.1 million so i just changed this first zero to a one and it doesn't seem to be giving me any kind of <clears throat> any kind of errors on startup, anything like that.
So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. And let me know how you make out with this. I'll see you soon.